Hey fourth graders, today we're going to be doing page 195 and 196 in our workbook. We will be doing some of it together and then I'll try to leave certain parts for you to do on your own. I'm going to zoom in because we are going to read at the top about inverse operations. So it's kind of like multiplication and division are inverse operations. They undo each other. And you've already noticed that probably in third grade when we used to do fact families a lot. And we would talk about how we would give you three numbers and you would do two division problems and two multiplication problems. And we talked about how they're kind of like opposites of each other. So we're going to read starting right here. A factor pair for a number is a pair of whole numbers whose product, remember, we use product when we are doing the answer for times, is that number. For example, a factor pair for 15 is 3 and 5 because we know that 3 times 5 is 15. A rectangle model is a diagram that shows a factor pair and the product. Remember, the product of a multiplication problem is the answer. Okay, So if you look over at the rectangle, we can see our pair is 7 and 9. If we times them, we get 63. So let's look at our first question, question number 1. It says, which numbers... In the rectangle model, that's this model right here, above are the factors. So what two numbers did we just say were the factors? 7 and 9, right? 7, I'm going to change that to black. 7, oh dear. Mrs. Hagen's struggling today. 7 and 9. Now they're asking one more question. Where are the factors located? Okay, they're not, they're located on the sides. Those are our factors. Seven times nine is 63. Okay, now remember how we talked about on number two, it says which number is the product? The product is the answer. Whenever we're doing a multiplication problem, we call the answer a product. Where is the product located? So they have two questions. Which number is the product? Okay, 63. Where is the product located? Inside the rectangle. Just kind of doing this part together. zoom back out and you're going to remember last week we did this next part we did this once last week so they're going to we're reading right here a rectangle model can help you find all of the eight remember how we wrote eight multiplication and division problems last week for two factors you can write these for the rectangle model above so now they're, ta they're still talking about this rectangle right here these are the, the eight problems. Notice that we have four times and four division. So they did those for us already. But we can look at these because we're going to do the same thing down here using different factors and a different product. Okay, But it's nice to have this one up here because we can look at it to help us do our eight problems. Okay. All right, so we're going to do them in the same format as they did up here, but we're going to be using 8 and 12 for our factors and 96 for our product. So look up here, okay? Our first one is going to be 96. Remember, I'm using these numbers, okay? But we can look up here to help us. 96 equals blank times blank. 12 times 8. Okay, and then if you look up here again, it's just, I can look up here to help me. I can say 96 
and flipping the factors around equals 8 times 12. Okay, and I'm going to stay with the times. I'm going to look, look over here now at these two, okay, because we're going to do the same thing, but we're going to use these numbers. So let's do that. We have 8 times 12 equals 96. Now look what they did right here. Flip them around. 12 times 8 equals 96. Now we're on to our four division problems that we're going to do. Okay, so let's look up here to help us. Take one of the factors. So let's, why don't we start with 8. And I say 8 equals, and now this is my division part. I'm going to say 96 divided by 12. Okay, so now I'm on this one right here using these numbers. So I'm going to use my other factor now, and I'm going to say 12 equals 96 divided by 8. Okay, now I'm going to do two more division ones. I'm going to look at these two. Notice how they're starting with the product or the answer. Okay, so I'm going to start with 96 divided by 12 equals 8. And then I'm going to flip it around. 96 divided by 8 equals 12. So we've done a couple of those now together. So hopefully when the next time we have one, I might have you try it on your own. Okay. So we are going to go on the back of this page and do a few more things together. And that's how it is some days, guys. If it's just a little bit too hard, we have to do it together, just like we would in the classroom. Meet me on page 196. All right. So as you can see, we're going to talk about another rectangle problem here. This time we're going to write an equation, remember an equation, we're going to write a problem to solve. So we're going to start out with a little bit of a story problem here that goes along with our rectangle. Brenda planted 234 trees on her farm. The farm has nine rows of trees. So I have 234 inside my rectangle and I have nine is one of my factors, okay? As you can tell, the other factor is missing. So we have a letter there, can be any letter. We're gonna have N there, okay? So that is what we're gonna try to figure out is what is N. It says how many trees are in each row. So let's start ans answering the questions. Their first question says, write the number of trees on the farm. We'll look up at your story problem. It says Brenda planted 234 trees on her farm. We have that information. We're going to write that on there. Write the number of rows of trees. We also have that up here, don't we? We have nine rows. So that's information that we know. Okay, now let's look at C. The number of trees in each row is unknown. That's this N up here is like our question mark, okay? What we're trying to figure out. Use the letter N to represent the number of trees in each row. Write an equation to solve the problem. So remember when we said we had our two numbers on the sides and we times them, didn't we? Did remember us talking about that? So if I wanted to say nine times N, Okay, I'm going to write an equation on this line. So you could say 9 times n equals 234, but we don't know what n is. Okay, another way that you'll sometimes see them write 9 times n, another way that you can do that is you can just say 9n equals 234. And the reason you can do that is because whenever the number is next to the letter, that means that you need to times them. So you don't even need the sign. So kind of try to remember that, that 
If you have a number next to a letter, that means that you're going to times them, okay? Okay, now for D, it says write a solution equation. How would you figure that out? What kind of equation would you have to do to figure out N? Well, remember how we talked about times and divide are inverse operations and that they undo each other? So in order to undo that equation, I'm going to take my big number first and I'm going to divide. So 234 divided by 9 is going to give me n. Okay, then I can figure out what n is. Remember, n is our question mark. Now, you're going to look at that and you go, well, that's a big division problem. Well, that's the kind where we have to show our work, right? So we are actually going to cross this out here. We're going to use this space down here so that we can show that, okay? So we have 9 on the outside of the house. And then 234, just like, remember, we worked on these a lot, guys. Okay, so I say, how many times does 9 go into 2? It does not. How many times does 9 go into 23? Let's do our count bys. 9, 18, 27, uh-oh, too big. So looks like 1, 2, 2, 9. So 2 times 9 is 18. Remember our steps, how we divide, multiply, subtract, check, and bring down. So we're on our subtract step. I can't do 3 take away 8, so I cross out my 2, make it a 1, make this a 13. 13 take away 8 is 5, and then 1 take away 1 is 0. Do I have anything to bring down? Yes, I do. I bring down my 4, and then I look back up, and i got to start my count wise again. 9 times 3, we stopped at 3, was 27. How about 9 times 4, 36. 9, you can use your multiplication chart if you need to. 9 times 5 is 45. I'm getting close. 9 times 6 is 54. Uh-oh, look what happened. It's going to work out perfectly, isn't it? So that was 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So I say 6 times 9 is 54. Subtract, and I have a remainder 0, so I don't need to write it. So now I know that n equals, because we were solving for n, remember, n equals 26 trees. Okay? had to remember we ended up crossing this one out guys just because we needed to have a little bit of white space okay so what I want you to do is I'm going to talk about what we need to do for our equations and then I'm going to see if you can maybe solve one or two of these on your own okay and I'm going to help you with, they want us to write an equation using a letter. So you can pick whatever letter you want, okay, when we get to that point. Let's read it together. Suki has 152 stickers to place in an album. How many pages will Suki fill with stickers if she puts eight stickers on every page? Okay, and you're probably already thinking in your head that it's divide. I'm hoping that you are, okay? And so if I wanted to write it with a letter, okay, let's say that we're going to use the letter X. Remember when they did those rectangles, guys, 152 would be in here. 8 is one of our factors. And then we could pick whatever letter you want. We could say X. So we are solving for X. Okay, so 8 times something times, remember, 8, 8 times x. See, that's why, that's why it's better, you guys, to do, remember how up above I said that you can just say 8x, because that really means 8 times x equals 152. This is, I should use a letter that's not x. 
Okay, so 8 times something is 152. But in order to figure that out, I need to divide, just like we did up above. So I'm going to put my 8 outside the house, and I'm going to divide. Okay? So you, I think you can solve that one on your own. You're going to say how many 8s fit into 1? Nope. And then keep going to get your answer. And then when you're done, you're going to say how many pages will she fill? So your label would be pages, and you'll put your answer right here. So I want you to do that one on your own, guys, okay? They're not leaving you a lot of room here. Okay, we're going to cross this one out. Let's look at number seven. Al designed a wall pattern with 27 rows of 28 squares. How many squares are in the wall pattern? This one, okay, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. He's got 27 rows with 28 squares. Okay, so are you thinking times or divide to figure out how many squares are in the pattern? Hopefully you're thinking times, right? So 27 times 28, and then that can be where you say equals a letter. Let's pick letter S this time. Okay, now how do I solve for S, okay? I need to take my, it's going to be two digit times two digit for my multiplication, okay? So make room. You can always get out more scratch paper if you need. These are the ones, guys, where we go 27 times 28. Who's remembering? Where we go up and then over. And then remember, you end up with a zero right here, right? So I go up, over, and then I go up and over again. And then I add them up. Okay, so I want you to do that one on your own too. Okay, don't forget to put your zero in there. So really, Mrs. Hagen is leaving you with two problems today to do on your own. So that's a pretty good deal. Thanks, guys.